If you want your home to feel clean and tidy all the time because you don't like cleaning, then this video is for you. I'm going to be sharing five simple tips that you can practice in your home to keep your home clean and tidy all the time without cleaning. This is going to be very exciting. Before we proceed, please smash that like button and subscribe. Let's head straight into the video. Disclaimer, this video is in no way telling you not to clean your home. You have to always make time to clean your home because cleanliness is next to godliness. Notwithstanding, as human beings, we cannot find ourselves cleaning every day. I personally don't clean every day. Number one tip, reduce clutter. Look guys, I actually believe that less is more when it comes to, you know, decoration and everything that has to do with the home. But there are people that actually believe that less is not more, which is fine. But even when you're doing that, you have to really pay attention to the pieces you are curating together to make sure that they don't cause clutter, they don't look messy especially in the kitchen. I used to feel it was cool to display all my kitchen appliances in the kitchen and that made my kitchen feel really cluttered. So I learned to put away most of my kitchen appliances. One rule of thumb to the kitchen is if you know the appliance you don't use on a daily basis, I don't see what you're doing on your kitchen counter. Seriously, find a home for it. Find a corner for it. Find a cupboard for it. If it's something you use once in a while, if you have a garage, they keep it in the garage. Whenever you need it, you bring it out and use and then take it back to the garage. That's one thing I know I actually do. If you come to my garage, you're going to see a lot of things placed in different places, like in different part of the garage like the kitchen the laundry and all that you don't want to clutter your counter with a lot of appliances you don't want to clutter your counter with a lot of pieces and junks and all that it will definitely make your kitchen look messy all the time learn to remove your appliances just tell yourself look the rule for this kitchen is i'm not going to be displaying lots of appliances in this kitchen and then i'm going to make sure i am very conscious of the things i leave on top of the counter many people will say i do not have room to put these things listen find the room find the space find the home for all your things in the kitchen find a corner take off all the plastics you don't use because i know plastics are things that really cause a lot of clutter in our kitchen i'm talking from experience so take off all those plastics Take off all those containers that you're no longer using or you don't use all the time. Clear them off from your counter and find a space in your counter. If possible, move your pots to the garage. Yes, listen, I've got pots in my garage. At the moment, with the way my under sink cupboard is, I don't have enough space for my pot. I am even thinking of taking off all those pots I rarely use and just leaving the ones I use constantly in the kitchen cupboard. Yes, that way I create more space for my appliances. Take all your pots, find a separate room for most of the pots you don't use because I'm very sure as women, we tend to buy pots more often. All those pots you feel you are not using all the time, take them off. From the kitchen counter so get that pot out of your counter get that food processor out of your counter you see those huge bowls you don't use all the time get them off your counter they that way whenever you bring them out to use as soon as you're done cooking and cleaning and you just want to clean up the space in your head you know that these things are not supposed to be on my counter so you take, just take them off that way you maintain a very clean and tidy counter and your kitchen stays clean most of the time in as much as you have not really really cleaned your kitchen nobody's gonna know if you don't tell them but your kitchen looks tidy my second tip is going to be have a tidy later tot or a wicker basket but you call it tidy later basket you can have it in your bedroom you can have it in your kitchen your entryway your living room every corner of your house you can just drop one basket my favorite is a wicker basket because they also add warm to the space so you can have this such that whenever you are free you can just tidy up and sort them out later especially because there comes a time when it gets filled up and then you want to congest because you need more space to put in more things it will always be a reminder to tidy up rather than dropping things on the countertop or on the floor randomly you can drop them in this basket and sort them out later life made easy even if you don't have time to sort them out that day by the time the basket is looking filled up and you want to drop something it's gonna be a reminder that okay look i have to make time to sort this basket out okay always have this tidy up later basket around your house you can never have enough especially those ones that will add beauty to your space you don't want to use something that is not aesthetically pleasing you guys know how much i love to tie in my spaces together so wicker basket is always my go-to i know a lot of people are going to be like i can't be bothered with this third point listen this third point for me is the ultimate it makes a whole difference and if you think i'm lying try it out my third point is always make your bed 
and your sofa. You don't have to have throw pillows. You don't have to be like Didi that loves throw pillows. But throw pillows make a whole lot of difference. They, you know, they upgrade your space, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I know a lot of people disagree, but they upgrade your space. Anyways, even if you have just one or two throw pillows on your bed, on your sofa, they make a whole lot of difference. Tidy up your bed. In the morning, it just takes two minutes. Make your bed. Apart from the way it looks in your house, it also sets you up for the day. You just have to make your bed. It's your bed. Make it. I'm not going to come and make your bed for you. And trust me, when you have your bed made, even if your house is not looking as clean as it should be, the entire room looks tidy. And that is also going to keep you away from dropping things on your bed randomly during the day. Because when you have your bed made and you drop something on top, it's going to be like, why am I dropping this thing here? Let me put it where it belongs. It's going to always ground you for the day. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? If you think I'm lying, give it a try and you'll see the difference. Just take some time in the morning when you wake up, straighten that bed and stuff your pillows. This also goes for your sofa. If you have throw pillows on your sofa, please make time to arrange those pillows. Yes, I have my moment when I just let my pillows be because I know the kids keep going there on and off, on and off. But the moment I feel like they are away for a long time, I'll just either call one of them, come and tidy up these pillows. That's why my kids know how to chop pillows today. Come and tidy up the pillows or I tidy it up myself, okay? It's more about just intentionally doing these little things to always keep your space tidy. And the moment you have your pillows tidied up on your sofa, your living room automatically looks clean and tidy. You don't have to hoover. Even if the floor is a bit messy, but you have your sofa intact, anybody can come in and not really look at the floor. I don't know if that makes sense. People can come in and overlook the floor and just be like, hmm, this place looks tidy and organized. Meanwhile, in your heart, in your head, you know you're still yet to tidy the floor. These are little things that will always keep your home looking tidy. You can never overemphasize the importance of making your bed and making your sofa. So fold your blankets, fluff your pillows. This will instantly make your living room look and feel clean. Now the fourth point, very important. <laughs> Especially for those that feel like number one is not important to them. Those that feel like less is not more, okay? Always go in with a tray. Use a tray to contain most of these things you have displayed on your countertop. Use a tray to contain your candle and your vase or whatever you have going on there. Very, very important. It automatically puts the place in order and makes it look grounded and clean. Kitchen table, your coffee table, your side table, your counter, always have a tray on there. Also helps when you want to clean that space. All you need to do is just to lift up the tray wipe the surface and keep the tray back except in situations where you feel like the tray needs to be wiped so you just take off those things once in a while wipe the tray and put them back but for general cleaning you do not have to take off these things face the tray wipe that surface and put back your tray and your space automatically feels clean and you can still have some of your clutters <laughs> Life is balanced. Trays are very important because they contain the mess and stops the spread. In your kitchen, if you have your oil, your pepper, and all the stuff, you can contain them in a tray. Your dishwashing soap, your hand washing soap, and all that either in your bathroom or your kitchen, you contain them in a tray. You don't just let them lie carelessly. Let me say, for instance, you have children, right? I'm talking from experience with my kids. I know that if I do not contain these things in a tray, I will come into the kitchen and find the hand wash somewhere and find the dishwash somewhere, like different positions, different from where I keep them, okay? Putting them in a tray is also a reminder for your children to know that, okay, this is where this dishwash is supposed to be. This is where this hand wash is supposed to be. So try to contain as much as you can in a tray. Throw in trays in all your clutters and they will automatically make the space look clean and tidier. Please, if you have watched this video up to this stage, it means you are enjoying the video. Smash the like button. This really helps us a lot. This brings us to the final point, which is declutter as much as possible. I remember talking to someone telling her declutter and she said, are you telling me to throw away my stuff? And then I didn't know how to answer that question because at the end of the day, it's not throwing away your stuff. It's getting rid of your stuff. I didn't know how to say no or yes, but that's the humble truth. Declutter as much as you can. 
listen i know sometimes we hold on to some of this stuff they are our stuff we spent money to buy these things one thing you need to understand is that you will never stop buying if you don't get rid of these things you will always accumulate and accumulate and then you get to a point where you won't even have space to buy more or to keep more or even if you have the space or even if you feel you have the space because in your head you used to clutter even if you feel you have the space you might just end up creating more clutter in your space i really really appreciate how hard it is to declutter and get rid of your stuff but i'm gonna recommend one thing that i feel like it has been working for me okay grab a box go to your kitchen open up your kitchen counters why do you have two dish spoons why why do you have two big bowls that you don't even use? Why do you have so many plastics that you don't use to store food? Like, why do you have so many of them? Go to your kitchen or your wardrobe and bring out a lot of things you have in your wardrobe. You know the stuff you've not been using for a long time. Bring them out. You have so many plastics in your kitchen. Grab them out, especially those ones you've not used in a long time. Bring them out. Why do you have too many spoons? bring out some of them just hunt for things that i duplicate that i know i have not been using for a very long time i threw them into the boxes okay then i carry that box and keep in the garage for a period of time it could stay there for like three or six months and then after three to six months when i feel like i want to visit a charity shop i bring out that box i search through that box and be like did i really miss anything from this box and then most times i even find out that i don't miss those things I'm using most of the the available ones so it means it's time to really let go of those things because I have dealt with the whole emotional stress. I've dealt with all the withdrawal syndrome that comes with it, you understand? Because we have this attachment to our stuff, right? By this three to six months when I'm ready to now revisit the box, and in my head, it's gone. I didn't really miss these things because I don't even remember I have stuff like this. So at that point, I know it's time for me to move that box to charity. So that way it helps me emotionally get ready to detach myself from these things. You too could practice this. Honestly, it is a very, very practical way of getting rid of your things. As we're talking now, you could just go through your wardrobe and ask yourself, which of these clothes have I not worn in months? Some of them could even be up to a year. Yes, that's how much clutter we keep. You just bring out those stuff and throw them into the box. Leave that box in your garage or wherever you want to store that box for. A period of time maybe three six months even one year as much as you feel you're ready and then the moment you feel like okay let me even check what's inside this box you realize that some of those things even the clothes you'll be like i can't even wear these clothes now like my my, my level has upgraded so i can't even wear this clothes. you know that kind of stuff then you just know that it's time to move that box to charity have you ever tried this how do you declutter your space how do you manage to get rid of stuff because i know that has always been a lot of people's challenges knowing myself okay i want to keep this video very short and precise so that you can go practice some of these things before we get ready for the phase two there's still so many ways you can keep a tidy home without actually cleaning and see i'm ready to share all these tips but you guys need to also do your own part by engaging on these videos if you see this kind of videos please engage because that's going to tell me that you guys are enjoying this kind of videos okay and then i'm gonna share more let me know which other tips you guys want me to share but be sure that there's gonna be more tips on this particular topic okay but like i said it also depends on how you guys engage on this video that's gonna tell me that you guys want more these few tips i have shared will actually help you enjoy a tidy home without actually tidying your home every time okay i hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video you have to smash that like button and subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video stay fabulous bye